Today I'm going to give you a full tour of where we've been living the last two years, a 2013 Keystone Cougar fifth wheel trailer. Now we are permanently located on our friend's property, so our setup might be a little bit different than other full-time RVers. Everything we own is right here, uh, with the exception of our lawnmower and some tools, which are in one of the outbuildings of the property owner, and our cars are parked at this gravel pad just behind the camera. So we get our electricity and water directly from the main house, but we have a dedicated propane tank that is serviced from a local propane company. We do collect all our wastewater in the tanks that came with the trailer, and when they're ready to be emptied, we empty them into this wagon, and then we haul it up to the property owner's septic tank. The biggest change that we've made is adding this roof structure, which of course protects us from the rain and the sun, but this partial wall also helps protect us from the wind. But my favorite part is the deck. So for the first year and a half or so, we had just used the stairs that came with the trailer. And for those of you that have used them before, you know they are so awkward. Trying to carry some heavy groceries while reaching up to get to the door handle is no fun. And both of us have slipped down them a couple times too. So having this level entryway to the, into the front door is so, so nice. We also had these doors installed under the deck and that provides a lot of storage for um, extra project supplies, gardening supplies, and other things that don't need to be protected from the weather. In our pass-through storage, we have our folding chairs, uh, miscellaneous tubs with different project supplies. Um, there's some sleeping bags back there and other stuff we just don't use that much. And now we're finally ready to go inside have a wall of cabinets when you first walk in and I love that I have a coat closet. Since we live in a four season area, we need a variety of winter coats, jackets, hats, and gloves, and that all fits in here pretty well. These cabinets here are pretty shallow, so it's not as useful for storage as it first looks, but it works for storing um, like tissue boxes and paper towels and things like that. I've got more paper goods up on the top, but I can't reach it unless I get a chair. And on top of the coat closet, uh, I have a bag for things I'm gonna take to the thrift store and a couple other things that I do wanna keep and I just don't wanna see. In these lower cabinets, we've got first aid supplies, um, lunch bags and some other random supplies and plastic bags and paper bags. So on this little shelf here, we've got a basket with the dog leash and the flashlight. I put my library books for return right here and I just got a set of temperature sensors so I can monitor the temperature of the underbelly and various points around the trailer. So my main dislike of this area is that this is also our mud room. There's not a lot of space here obviously and I've got a dehumidifier here on the floor. Our boots have to be right inside the door. We do have some trays and shoe stands. We basically live in a field and we work outside a lot so we're always tracking in dirt, muddy boots, wet jackets. And I do have a collapsible drying rack that I'll put about here, and that just doesn't leave very much room to get inside the door. This is the hallway that leads to the bedroom and the bathroom, and I rebuilt these stairs so that they have storage underneath, and it's not perfect construction, but it works for us. Our control panel's in the hallway, but we don't really use much of it. Like the slides and the awning, we don't ever touch, and we use the lights, but like, these tank sensors don't work anymore and um, we're just so in tune to our own tank usage that I don't need to rely on those lights. So I like having a little bit of a hallway and a real door that leads to the bedroom because it makes me feel like I have a two room home. And the separation is also nice because let's be honest, sometimes hubby and I just need some time apart from each other. So we have a queen size bed and as you come in the door, the bed is positioned sideways because this whole wall behind us is the slide out. And that was something I was looking for when we were shopping for the camper because to me that layout looked less like a camper bedroom and more like a regular bedroom. So the main drawback to that is the slide mechanism is under the bed so you don't have the typical underbed storage. Um, but since we're stationary and we don't use the slide, we can fit quite a bit of extra bedding and pillows under the bed even so. We do have a little nightstand with drawers on one side of the bed. Unfortunately, the other side just has a little shelf and there's no drawers. So we have a pretty nice closet, even though it's short and some of our clothes will touch the floor unless we fold them up. And it came with heavy mirrored sliding doors and I replaced those with a dowel rod and blankets for the curtains. It's much easier to get in all parts of the closet now. We have a good amount of deep drawer space here. 
and shelves here. We have a bunch of shallow drawers here. They can fit things like socks, undies, um, rolled up leggings, extra washcloths, and some miscellaneous stuff in the bottom. I feel like we have a pretty big bathroom for a trailer. This shower is almost residential size, but I feel like I don't need this length and I would have rather it been shorter and have this side have some extra cabinets. Our medicine cabinet is pretty spacious. Here we have our tank tracker where we write down each time we take a shower and the last time the tanks have been emptied. The sink area is a decent size and I can fit quite a lot in the space under the sink too. Something to point out is there are no locking doors and my dog knows how to open the sliding door with his nose. So there's not really such a thing as total privacy around here. Heading back to the main area, you can see that we have opposing slide outs, which make this area feel very open and much larger than a lot of campers and tiny houses that I've seen. The high ceiling also allows for what I feel is necessary breathing space, which we don't have in the bedroom. I'll point out now that I replaced all the window treatments, which I think helps make it look more homey. I also put up peel and stick wallpaper in a bunch of places, and I really like how it turned out. This is where my husband sits and keeps a lot of his stuff. This is actually where the dining room table and chairs used to be. It's a very narrow space and the slide out makes the floor uneven, but he doesn't seem to mind it. We have a printer here and his stuff baskets. Baskets on the bottom shelf hold various stuff like extra ink, snacks, or things we're getting rid of. This is our sitting area. Right now it's extended to couch bed form, which allows all three of us to be able to stretch out and have plenty of room to relax during the day. And it is nice having an extra bed in case one of us isn't feeling well or is having trouble sleeping. With the couch extended, it is more cramped, but the trade-off is worth it to us. And I still have room here for my card table to do a larger puzzle or game. In these cabinets above the couch, I have various things like a few books, my handheld video games, and my photography camera. In this far cabinet, I call it my nature center. So out this window, I can see a lot of wildlife like coyote, deer, even bald eagles. And so I've got my binoculars that I can grab really quick. Of course, my photography camera. And then I have a little thing of different like nature identification booklets and a couple of souvenirs that I found on hikes or something. And over here next to the couch, I have tucked away my card table, a full-size folding chair, um, a wooden tray, and a couple of other flat things. Here we are at my favorite place, Mega Desk. We used to have two really comfy armchairs and an end table here, um, but I only miss those armchairs a little bit because I love Mega Desk so much. Um, this is where I used to work when I worked from home, and of course now I plan and edit my videos here. Um, sometimes we hook up a video game system to this monitor, or we can watch um, DVDs on my computer. When I tuck away my keyboard like this, I have room to do smaller puzzles. I can eat here. I can color here. Mega Desk is awesome! To the left of Mega Desk is my plant stand, which I explained in detail in a previous video if you're interested in knowing more about how I set that up. To the right of Mega Desk is a narrow set of drawers which holds more snacks camera equipment, and vacuum accessories. Next to that, I have a folding tray table, which is typically what we eat dinner on, another tiny folding chair, and the vacuum. In the cabinets above Mega Desk, we have stationery and paperwork, my scrapbooks and photo albums, and a bunch of board and card games. Here's our entertainment area. It's got cubbies here to put books or knickknacks, and behind the TV is a lot of extra space. I end up putting a lot of things back there that's temporary storage, like Christmas presents or maybe things that I've purchased recently I'm not sure where to store. And above here is where we keep all of our um, DVDs and CDs and some extra books and stuff. And what's nice is behind there it's deep enough that I can put empty boxes or other things I do want to keep but I don't need to get to very often. On the lower left cabinet I keep all of my hobbies like jigsaw puzzles and coloring books, some of my garden stuff. And on the right, I have extra pantry um, supplies and like dog food and stuff goes down here. And I love the fireplace. We use it probably at least six months out of the year. 
But what's irritating is I have taken this out to clean it and it's probably only like six inches deep. All this area behind here is finished space. So if you have a fireplace and you're in a warmer area and you don't need it, try taking it out because that would be a lot of extra storage ready to go. And lastly, this is our kitchen area. It's a pretty good sized area for an RV or tiny home and I actually have the same amount of drawer space that I did in my old 2000 square foot house. The kitchen island has a double sink and I don't store anything up here because this side is for dirty dishes and this is where I put the dishes when I'm drying them and I do occasionally use this side for food prep. Below the sink on the left is trash and recycling. In the middle are cleaning supplies. And on the right are office supplies, batteries, and a catch-all drawer. On the end here, we have an old microwave stand that holds our Berkey water filter, a little coffee pot, coffee supplies, and more dog food stuff. This is our main pantry. And at first, it seems like you can fit quite a lot in here until you try to fit a big old cereal box or a bag of chips. And that's when you remember you live in a tiny home. The bottom pantry has one more drawer for food. And this cubby here is open and it's actually big enough for me to fit a medium sized crock pot. In the lower cabinets, I put all my pots, pans, and containers. This is my main counter for preparing food and I try to keep my kitchen gadgets to a minimum. Uh, I do have a massive four slot toaster and before you make fun of me, please know that it was a wedding present. It's almost 20 years old and I am not replacing it with a smaller one until it dies. And above here we have our plates and spices and cups. And we are lucky enough to have our microwave. And then we have a three burner propane range and oven. And I always like to point out this bottom area of the oven is not wasted space, it is a broiler. So please use all of your oven. And here next to the oven I have a good amount of drawer space. I've got silverware tray, other utensils, um, some of the stuff I use a little bit less often, and all my kitchen towels. So our RV fridge died a little bit ago and we decided to replace it with a mini residential one. It's worked pretty well for us so far, though it's a little bit smaller than the previous fridge. It's now magnetic, which is nice. I've got a sensor here to monitor the inside of the freezer and the fridge. And I have a little bit of a space here so that I can store cereal boxes. Yay! Well, that's the end of the tour. I hope you enjoyed seeing my home. See you again soon.